So now here I have 250 grams of boneless chicken breast. I've just cut them up into rectangles like this. So this is about, uh, you know, you get about six to seven pieces, enough for a family of four. So now to this, I'm going to add two teaspoons of onion powder. This is dry onion powder. It's easily available online or in stores. Next, I'm going to be adding two teaspoons of garlic powder. Next, we're going to add one teaspoon of pepper powder. One teaspoon of red chili flakes. Next, we're going to go with one teaspoon of soya sauce or soy sauce. One teaspoon of vinegar. Now, I'm going with white vinegar, but you can even use apple cider or whatever vinegar you generally use. Two teaspoons of mixed herbs. Or you can also use the pizza pasta seasonings. Next, I'm going to add one teaspoon of very finely chopped up garlic. So that comes to about two large cloves of garlic. Next, I'm going to add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. One tablespoon of barbecue sauce. One tablespoon of sweet onion sauce. And some salt to taste. So try not to skip out any of the ingredients because all these ingredients are really important for this recipe and they're easily available. So mix all of this well and set this aside to marinate for at least 15 to 20 minutes. You must give this dish a try guys. It's super super delicious. So now I've just heated uh, uh, about one teaspoon of oil with half a teaspoon of butter in a pan. And here I've just uh, prepared a mixture of one tablespoon of corn flour with three tablespoons of plain flour or maida. I'm just going to coat each of the pieces with this mixed flour. So mix the corn flour and the plain flour really well and then just dip these pieces uh, into it so they're coated really well. Dust off the excess and then just, just going to shallow fry them in the oil and butter mixture. And the butter also adds a lovely flavor. And then just fry them uh, on both sides till they're nice and golden brown in color. So they look like this. And then you're just going to drain the excess oil and then put them on a plate. And now we're going to prepare the jus. So in the same pan, we're just going to add one fourth cup of water, one fourth cup of red wine or wine, whatever wine you have available. I prefer using red wine, but the unsweetened one. Then I'm going to add one teaspoon of barbecue sauce. One teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. We're going to stir this mixture really well. And I'm going to add just about one uh, teaspoon of butter. And again, I'm going to add about one teaspoon of sweet onion sauce, half a teaspoon of pepper powder, give this a nice stir. And now we're just going to add about half a teaspoon of the mixed flours because this will help to thicken up this jus or this sauce. Now, for those of you who don't uh, want to add the wine, you all can skip the wine. 
and then just mix all of this till the sauce really nicely thickens and our jus or our sauce is all ready and now it's time to serve the dish so now that the chicken is already on the plate i'm just going to pour the jus over this and then all we have to do is just garnish it with some chopped up coriander or cilantro or if you like parsley or celery you can add that now you can serve this with some lovely veggies so the other day i had some i had just tossed some broccoli uh, in a little bit of olive oil and seasoned it with some salt and pepper i had some mashed potatoes as well as fried potatoes or you can just serve them with some chips and rice it just tastes amazing so do give this recipe a try and so let's see today's interesting recipe of chicken satay with peanut sauce now first i'm going to prepare the marinade for which i've taken 1 tablespoon of ginger garlic paste 1 tablespoon of shezwan chutney i'm going to add about 2 teaspoons of tomato ketchup or tomato sauce Next I'm going to add just about a teaspoon of pepper powder. All I've done is roast the pepper powder and ground it in my dry mixer. Now I'm going to add 1 teaspoon of Kashmiri red chili powder for the color and also for the spiciness I'm going to add 1 teaspoon of regular red chili powder. Now I'm going to add 1 teaspoon of soy sauce or soy sauce for the taste as well as the color. And now I'm going to uh add a little bit of salt because the soy sauce also has some salt so just a little bit of salt and mix all of this so this is our marinade for the chicken now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take about 2 tablespoons out of this marinade and set it aside for the peanut sauce that we're going to prepare so just take about 2 tablespoons and set it aside now i've taken 250 grams of chicken which i've cut cut up into large cubes and i'm just going to add this marinade mix it up really really well so all of the chicken pieces are coated and cover it and keep it for 15 minutes now after 15 minutes i'm going to add 4 tablespoons of corn flour and uh see so that it gets uh, nicely uh, you know coat uh, it get spread all over the chicken and i'm also going to beat up one egg and i'm going to add that too so what this will do is when we fry the chicken a little bit it will become nice and crispy so after adding the egg and the corn flour i'm going to mix all of this and again i'm going to set it aside for at least 25 minutes so all of the marinade as well as the egg and the corn flour really you know infuses the chicken so set this aside for 25 minutes that's very important for the right a kind of crispiness that we're looking for now after about 25 minutes i'm going to heat about 4 tablespoons of oil and i'm just going to fry this chicken pieces uh, till they're nice and golden brown on both sides so keep your uh, heat between medium and high and just keep turning the chicken till you get this lovely crispy golden brown color and then drain the excess oil on some kitchen napkin so your chicken should look like this you should have nice crispy pieces it should be well coated with all of the marinade as well as the corn flour as well as the egg and now in the same pan in which we fried it there should be at least about 1 teaspoon of oil in it if there isn't then just add a little and i want to add some diced garlic fry the garlic really well it's about 2 tablespoons of diced garlic that is about 4 large cloves cut really fine fry the garlic till it's you know all the rawness goes away then i'm going to add 1 teaspoon of shez one chutney mix the chutney in well with the garlic So this is going to be like a kind of a sauce only which will coat the chicken. Now I'm going to add half a teaspoon of pepper powder. Next I'm going to add 1 tablespoon of tomato sauce or tomato ketchup, whatever you have at hand. Mix that in well. So this is a really delicious dish guys and Uh, you'll want to make it all at that all the time. Now I'm going to add half a teaspoon of soy sauce, or one teaspoon of soy sauce, or you can adjust it as per you know your taste. Now I'm going to add half a teaspoon of vinegar for a little bit of tanginess, and mix everything in really well. Oh, the aroma is amazing! And now I'm just going to add about one fourth cup of water. 
Now I've prepared a slurry using one tablespoon of corn flour to four tablespoons of water and mix that in really well. And I'm going to add this slurry. Now stir it in before you're adding it because the corn flour tends to settle at the bottom of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the vati or the cup. And then add that. Now what this corn flour slurry will do is it will thicken up this gravy or this coating immediately. So this is like a thick sauce which we're going to you know, put the chicken in. And then I'm going to show you the peanut sauce that goes really well with this chicken satire. So now our sauce has nicely thickened. Keep your gas on a very low flame and just add all the chicken pieces back in. Mix everything really well together so that all of the chicken gets coated with this sauce. Ensure that all the chicken pieces are nicely coated. Now one tip I'd like to give you here is add the chicken to the sauce, you know, just about 5 or 10 minutes before you're going to serve it and then garnish it with some coriander. That way the chicken will remain nice and crispy. Now we're going to make the sea peanut sauce. So I've not turned the heat on under the pan. I've taken a saucepan to which I've added 1 cup of peanut powder. Then I'm going to add 1 cup of coconut milk. Now this is just a ready-made coconut milk. I've just added the powder to some hot water. Or you can use you know actual coconut milk now i'm adding one teaspoon of brown sugar if you don't have brown sugar you can use regular sugar but brown sugar adds a little bit of an extra taste taste to it now this is the marinade that we had kept aside just add that too now uh, i leave a link of how i prepare peanut powder at home i leave a link in the description box uh, you can go and check it out it's super simple now i'm just going to add a little pinch of salt and i'm going to add the juice of half a lemon so remember the gas is not yet turned on, that is the heat is not turned on. We're just adding all the ingredients first. Now mix everything really well together. Now is the time you're going to turn the heat on and you're going to keep stirring this sauce on a very low to medium flame till everything comes together and the, uh, you know, the sauce starts to thicken up a bit. Now at this point would be a good time to give a taste to this sauce to see if you want to add a little bit of, uh, you know, more of the sarnes or more of the sweetness. So accordingly, you can adjust the sauces, etc. Now keep on stirring this till you get a nice thick peanut sauce. Now generally, this chicken satire is made on skewers or kebab sticks, but I'm just making it as a dry dish. And all you have to do is just, you know, pick up the chicken pieces and just dip them in the sauce and have them. So our sauce is all ready. So all I've done is just kept the chicken pieces in a plate. I've just added the sauce to a small little cup. And all you have to do is take a fork and just dip it into the sauce and have it. So this is a super simple dish and really, really delicious. So Let's take a look at the ingredients that we require for these waters. They're very few. Here I'm using just half a cup of whole wheat flour. I have one fourth cup of rice flour. I have one fourth cup of powdered sugar. Two tablespoons of fine rava or semolina. One fourth cup of clarified butter or ghee which I've just lightly melted. One fourth cup of coconut milk. And some salt to taste. So let's see how we make these beautiful vades or vades. Now in a large mixing bowl, I'm just going to add all the three dry ingredients that is the wheat flour, the rice flour, the powdered sugar, as well as the semolina or the rava. I'm going to add a pinch of salt or as per your taste. Then I'm going to add about half the quantity of my melted clarified butter. And I'm going to use a little bit of the coconut milk at a time and then I'm going to knead everything to a smooth yet a firm dough. Now the coconut milk that I am using I've just used a packet coconut milk. I've just taken some water, warmed it up in my microwave, added the coconut powder and I've just got a nice thick coconut milk. Now if you want to use fresh coconut and get the coconut milk that is also great. Now the clarified butter I've just melted it because we are in the winter and the ghee tends to solidify so I've just taken a little bit in a glass bottle and just heated it in my microwave. That just makes it easier to work with and then of course the most important thing is we have to set this dough aside for at least three to four hours if we want the perfect waters. 
Now, after waiting for three to four hours, we're just going to knead our dough a bit till it becomes nice and flexible and nice and smooth to work with. So here I love to work on this flat surface that I have in my kitchen for all my baking and kneading. It really, I have more space and you know, I just love working on it. So now I'm just going to divide the dough into two halves because that way it becomes more easier. And then I'm just going to roll it out to about an inch of thickness. We want a little bit of a thicker uh, dough and we're going to cut it out with some I'm just using a regular vati you can use any round sharp object to cut it up into circles and then just make all the waters put them on a separate plate now from the quantity of ingredients that I'm using I got about 20 waters which was I think enough for my family of four so uh, you know if you want to make some more then you just increase the quantity as per uh, the measurements given and then I'm just going to keep them all aside. Now, in the meantime, I've also kept some oil for deep frying. I'm using regular cooking oil. And then just going to put one water at a time because I want to concentrate on them. I don't want to overload my pan. And, you know, I want them to nicely puff up and become a nice light golden brown. Now, uh, keep the flame from low to medium, not on a very high flame. And uh, just uh, let them puff up and once they become a light golden brown color, you can just drain the excess oil first and then just put them on some kitchen napkins so that they uh, completely, you know, all the oil, excess oil is drained off. And that's it friends, your waters are all ready. You can also make these waters, just store them in your refrigerator for a day or two and then just fry them whenever you uh, need to uh, serve them. They are simply delicious and you need to try this out. Make a small quantity like I did and then, you know, uh, if you want to make a bigger quantity, then just double or triple the ingredients. So there it is, friends. Our waters are all ready and they have a, quite a big shelf life. You know, if you store them in an airtight container, they last for a week. <laughs> So now I have lined a baking tray with some baking paper and using a teaspoon, I've just uh, added a dollop of Nutella onto this baking sheet. You can get as many dollops as, you, as you're going to make cookies because this is going to be the filling inside our cookies. And after doing this, we're going to freeze this for an hour or even longer for two hours also till it solidifies. And uh, then we can continue with our next step, which is making the cookie dough. These are the ingredients that are going to be used for the cookie dough. Here I have two cups and three fourth cup of all purpose flour or maida. This is one cup of regular powdered sugar. This is one fourth cup of brown sugar. This is one teaspoon of baking powder as well as one teaspoon of vanilla essence or extract. I have one cup of melted butter here which I've just melted in my microwave. You can do it on the gas stop if you don't have a microwave. This is the cup measurement that I've been using for all of this. And I have two eggs at room temperature. Now in a large bowl, I'm going to be first adding Now in a large bowl, I'm going to be adding the melting butter. To this melted butter, I'm going to be adding the brown sugar which is now easily available in stores. Give it a good whisk. Then we're going to be adding the regular powdered sugar. You can powder regular sugar at home in your mixy or mixer pot, whisk it well. Then we're going to be adding the eggs one at a time and again whisk it in well. Next we're going to be adding our vanilla essence as well as we're going to be adding our baking powder. After whisking all of this in well, we're now going to be adding our all-purpose flour but now we're not going to whisk it, we're going to fold it in. This is very important. So I have to use two cups and three fourth cup of uh, all-purpose flour or maida. You don't need to sift it. 
just get everything in, fold it in well. Now, if you have chocolate chips at hand, you can use that or just take dark chocolate compound, make it into chips and put it into this. It just adds a extra oomph. And now we're going to freeze this for 30 minutes in our refrigerator. That is also very, very important. Now, once the Nutella dollops have frozen as well as the cookie has set, what we're going to do now is we are going to line a baking tray with uh, some baking paper. We're going to preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. And now we're just going to make balls with the dough. Just put the uh, Nutella dollop in the middle and just seal it up well and place it on the baking sheet. Also ensure that the, bake, that the cookies are placed a little away from each other because they are going to spread out once they get into the oven. So I got a total of six on the tray as well as two which I bake later on so I got a total of eight huge cookies you can make smaller ones too and once the oven is nice and preheated we're going to bake this for 10 minutes in the oven till they are nicely baked and nicely done And after waiting patiently, after 10 minutes, we have some amazing Nutella filled cookies. And once they're baked, just put them on a baking rack and let them cool down completely for 10, 5 to 10 minutes. And then you can enjoy these amazing cookies. friends i hope you loved today's recipe i hope you give it a lovely try and i so friends you get this bunch of lemongrass easily available in the market and it's very very reasonable uh, we just have to cut it up into small bits like this about in an inch size and just store it in your refrigerator and you can just use it when you require Now there are also stalks, you don't have to use the stalks, so just remove the leaf part of it and discard the stalks away. These, this lemongrass is available all 12 months of the year in the market. Okay, this is just a oats muffin that I made for breakfast today. I have a recipe coming up soon for the oats muffin. It's a great breakfast item. So let's begin making this lovely lemongrass tea. Now I'm going to start off by crushing an inch of ginger in a mortar and pestle. You can also grate it. Now I'm making four cups of tea. So I'll be using four cups of water. I've added this crushed ginger and I'm going to be putting a handful of this lemongrass. Now we're going to put it on the heat and let it come to a boil. Now I don't use sugar but if you're going to add sugar you can add sugar at this time you can add one teaspoon of sugar for each cup so four teaspoons of sugar and also remove uh, or keep aside four teaspoons of the tea powder. We'll add it only once our mixture comes to a boil. Now at our home we use the society blue color packet tea powder. We've been using it for lo a long long time now and we love the flavor. So now we're going to add the tea powder once the mixture comes to a boil. Just give it a stir so everything gets mixed up well. And let this boil for a whole five minutes. Now you can keep your milk also hot and ready if you use milk. Even a 
plain black tea of this lemongrass tastes amazing. I like having it with milk but without any sugar. So after it boils for 5 minutes, just cover and keep it aside. Also keep a whistle and a strainer. I have a recipe for a normal regular cup of tea and over there also I have, uh, I have mentioned that you should keep your tea vessels whatever you use on a regular basis you know in one particular place because we have tea every day so you know if you assign a particular vessel and a particular strainer then it's you know you know okay if I want to make a cup of tea I have to use this so now we're going to strain the tea into the vessel and again we're going to cover and keep this aside for a whole minute This way, everything comes together well and you get a lovely flavor through the tea. Now, after it has rested for about a minute, we're going to pour the tea into a cup. The tea has a lovely aroma of the lemongrass. Like I said, you can have this plain black tea without sugar. Also, it tastes lovely and without milk but I like milk so I just add a little bit of milk now you can add your sugar while the tea was boiling or you can add it at this point if you use sugar and then just give it a stir so everything gets well mixed together I love having a piping hot cup of tea let me know in the comments box below what kind, you know, how whether you like to have your tea piping hot or you like to have it at room temperature. So there your cup of tea is ready. It just tastes so divine and so refreshing. So try out this recipe, friends. Get your hands on some lemongrass. It's easily available in the marketplace. It's locally called Pati Chaha. You can also grow this in your garden. It grows very fast and 12 months of the year. So try out this lemongrass in your tea when you make tea next time. And let me know how you like it.